The Committee on Land, Agriculture, Environment, and Procurement Reform calls this oversight hearing to order. It is now 5 p.m. on Tuesday, May 22nd, 2018. Uh, present with me tonight is, to my right, Senator Mike Sinicholas, and to his far right is um, Senator Fernando Estevez. To my left is Senator Frank Uggen. Um, to his left is Senator Mary Torres, and to the far left is the Speaker, uh, Speaker Benjamin Cruz. Uh, the purpose of today's oversight hearing is to obtain uh, from CLTC applicants the program assessment of the Chamorro Land Trust program and recommendations for improvements. So actually tonight's hearing uh, is going to be 99% input from you. Uh, we'll be in the listening mode. Um, and then later this week on Thursday, we will have part two of this oversight hearing where then the CLTC officials uh, will be coming before the panel to discuss um, the issues regarding program compliance. Uh, and then on next uh, Thursday uh, at 5 p.m. in the evening again, we will be conducting the third and final part of the hearing, which will take a look at the program's revenues uh, that it receives and how those funds have been expended. A copy of the uh, rules and regs, uh, if, if any of you haven't picked up a copy of it, they're available at the table here. And those are the rules and regs which were adopted back in 1994, uh, which is supposed to guide the processing of applications and the issuance of leases, uh, etc. Notice of this oversight hearing was provided to senators stakeholders and the local media, as well as published in the Guam Daily Post on May 14, 2018 and May 18, 2018, thus meeting the requirements of the open government law. To start this oversight hearing, I just want to uh, establish the rules of engagement. I'm anticipating that there will be a lot more people coming in this evening, and so uh, I want to make sure that uh, we afford as much opportunity as possible to everyone who has taken the time uh, to be here tonight to provide oral testimony. You are also welcome to provide written testimony with more details, uh, and if we could have that no later than next Monday. Um, now, where we are going with these oversight hearings is that we're going to get the input tonight. They'll be on record. We'll have transcripts made. Uh, the discussions with the CLTC uh, officials on Thursday, this coming Thursday and Friday, uh, will glean all that information and take a look at appropriate legislation that should be introduced to um, improve the program, close loopholes, uh, and also to address uh, other issues that may be raised. I, I do want to point out that... Uh, the members of the Chamorro Land Trust Commission are here tonight. Uh, we have the chairperson to the far left, Ms. Pika Ferrin. Uh, to her left is uh, Chantel Tichaira. Uh, we have Mr. Austin Duenas, and uh, the other uh, a senior member on the commission is Mr. Joseph uh, Cruz. Um, before we start the hearing tonight, I will ask the, the chairperson to, to make a brief statement about basically how they are interfacing with these hearings tonight. Now, so written testimonies can be submitted today or, but certainly no later than uh, Monday, May 28th for inclusion in the committee report. And they can be dropped off here at the legislature uh, or uh, email to tom at senatorada.org. Now, in order to ensure that everyone present tonight is afforded the opportunity to present their oral testimony, a five-minute rule will be in effect. Okay? Um, so I will have a timer up here who will show uh, when we start, 
he'll, he'll, he'll indicate to go ahead and begin and that the five minutes um, is starting. And then when you are up to a, a minute left, another indicator will be given. And then, um, and then when the time is up, um, if in case you didn't notice, then I'll have to remind you that we're doing the five minute rule, all right? Um, so at this point, I would like to ask first the chairperson of the uh, Chamorro Land Trust Commission to, uh, if you please, uh, she would like to just make some remarks uh, regarding how the commission, the board, is um, uh, reacting to all these uh, things. So, Ms. Farron. Thank you, Senator Ada, and thank you, senators, for being here. Um, first, I want to thank uh, Senator Ada for calling these uh, three oversight public hearings. And the first one tonight is so that we can all hear and witness um, the concerns of our Tomorrow Land Trust beneficiaries, of which you all are. And I want to assure you that your commission is here tonight. We also have our administrative director, Mr. Mike Borja, also present. So we will hear you, each and every one of you. And I want to thank you each for being here. Now we have five of our Tomorrow Land Trust staff that has stayed back in the office and they will be watching the oversight hearing as it goes on. And they will also be getting copies of the com public comment sign-in sheet. And what they'll be doing at the office is they will be taking notes on each one of your testimonies and taking those notes and looking in each of your files so that we can answer and address each of your concerns. Once they've been able to create a staff report to answer and address each of your concerns, we would like to share that with uh, the senators and put it on public record. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Farron. Thank you. I'll also like to recognize joining us is uh, the vice speaker, uh, Therese Terlahi, and uh, Senator Jim Spaldon, the chairperson, uh, vice chair for the committee. I already introduced. Yeah, I am. So, um, signing up, I have um, Francis Munoz. Uh, I'm going to call. I'm going to call up the names, and um, and then uh, and then we'll fill up the chairs, and then you can go ahead and provide your testimony. So, Francis Munoz. Uh, Lou Nettidog, uh, Julia Kagioga, is Lou Nettidog here? Yes. Oh. Trini Torres, Linda De La Cruz, And I'll just stop with that. That's the first uh, seat, sh sheet here. So uh, for the record, we'll start off with Mr. Munoz. Um, I, first of all, I, I presume that this will be the updated contact information that's written on here. Um, and please also, uh, in the case of Mr. Munoz, you are a 1995 applicant, correct? OK, please go ahead, proceed. Uh, turn on your mic, please. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So for the record, state your name, please. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to uh, uh, express my uh, sentiments. I come here representing my, my children, my wife, my nieces, my nephews. Uh, one of the first applicants in the, in the 95 year uh, uh, era. Uh, we have, they have spent close to $3,000 in surveying land uh, and in time were relocated after paying over $3,000 uh, uh, to have the land surveyed. Now when they got to their uh, destination, you know, they were told that uh, they would have to pay the surveyor again for having that new location uh, surveyed. 
Uh, and the surveyor that uh, did this promised to give my sons and daughters, nieces, nephews, the title which they never received. Uh, that was enough to uh, uh, really, you know, I'm really hurt. I am not going to point fingers or blame anybody. This, I believe, was an administrative uh, error. I, I can't see any crime committed here uh, other than uh, administrative uh, negligence or what have you. I am, I'm not much of a, you know, I, I saw what happened, but I will not comment on, on anything else uh, besides the point that the, a lot of my family claimed that they were jumped, I mean, people were jumping over them. Being one of the first on the list as applicants, some of them are gone, left the island, pursued college, graduated, master's, bachelor's. They're, uh, they didn't want to have anything to do with this after spending that much money. And during that time, a lot of them were just going to school and uh, economically, economically at a disadvantage. They wanted land, they wanted to build something, plan, everything that was promised. So uh, this is why I'm here, uh, to represent them. They, they don't want to have anything to do with this. They're hurt. And I said, never mind, I'll go and uh, uh, air out some of my feelings too, because as a father, grandfather, great, I hurt senators. I hurt. And when somebody does this to my, my children or anybody's f for that matter, yeah, you know, they're landless. I expected something. If the administration inherited unsolved problems, I would have been expecting the new administration to find solutions and fix it. I guess it's too late. I don't, every, everything is uh, up in the air now. But I will not point. I will not accuse. Everything is on black and white. Everything is on the media, you know. So I'm probably going to have to rely on your findings and your decisions, my dear centers. I'm going to stop now because uh, this it probably won't end. But this, this was my concern. Thank you very much, uh, Senator, for, for hearing me. I guess that was, what, four and a half minutes? I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I thank you for adhering to the time. Uh, but, uh, Francis, if you can, make sure that you provide the staff over there uh, at least the names of the other app members of the family that have applied, and um, at least we can also make a check of those. Yes, I will, uh, by Monday, I will have a written uh, uh, testimony and... All the documents are complete. Everything, I have everything complete. Written testimony. I'll okay, excellent, that. great. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Okay. Um, Lou Netty Dog. Turn on, turn on your mic, please. Okay. Uh, go. First of all, I just want to thank each and every one of you senators and also the uh, board members of the uh, CLTC. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us who have been silent for a long time. Thank you very much, especially to uh, Pika Ferran. Thank you very much. This is a great opportunity for us. And so for the record, you're Lou Nettie Dog, and you're a 1995 applicant. Correct. And I'm here on behalf of my deceased father, Tomas P. Q. Tenorio. Um, I, and uh, I also was an applicant, so um, I was able to maintain our property. However, um, I have visited the Chamorro Land Trust Commission 
a couple of times and we were assured, I even have his um, a payment for the property of $50, a copy of that receipt, um, that, and they even issued us the uh, rules and reg at that time. Thank you, sir. And, um, and then two years ago, we overheard that the property that my dad that my dad's name is on is no longer his, it is under somebody else's name. <clears throat> that property is already surveyed. And each time that I went into CLTC, not once did any of the staff members told us that we need to have our property surveyed. And this property, my dad paid, it was under agricultural it wasn't Tomorrow Land Trust yet. It was under the arendu. So every year my dad paid $60 for his property. And all of a sudden, somebody else owns this property. How did that happen? Now anyway, um, the property is cleared. And you know, we're wondering what's going on? How, how can they survey their property when they just had the property two years ago or a year ago. And we've been, my dad has been down there since 1964. And this property is at Savannah and Magas, Thai. I, I, that's, that's a question that we're, we would like to have an answer. Um, the property has been cleared. Um, I don't know if I should mention names. Maybe not. Should I? Mention. Okay. Um, Laura, please don't have anybody shoot <laughs> their names. But anyway, um, the property was under Afaji. Is under Afaji now. Um, all five members of his family have properties side by side. So. Um, I went down, when I heard this, I went down to C, uh, CLTC last year to find out how could this happen. And I was told that, Lou, do you want to go through all this trouble to get your dad's property back? You know, we can compensate you another property so that, and you know, it's, it's land. I'm not going to take it down with me to my grave, right? Um, so I said, it's okay, never mind. I don't want to go through all that. I spend all that money. And so this, okay, so we'll, we'll give you another property. Well, so they said, we'll give you a property. I have the maps here of what they wrote in and whatever they did with us. So they gave us a property that looked like a crown. They, they want us to be satisfied with that piece of property. I mean, you know, we're not greedy people. We just want to know what is happening. And like I said, I greatly appreciate for this time for us to come out. So um, they have tent, uh, when they cleared the property, they have two tents up with billboards that says guitars. And the, and the machine that this person used to clear that property belongs to this person. I'm not doing this because it's election year, but I've been silent. I have one minute remaining. So I, that's all I came here to say. I, Lou, what was the name of your father who was the arendu holder? Tomas P.Q. Tenorio. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Next one I have is uh, Ms. Kagioa. And you are a 2007 applicant? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I applied since that time and I was, I guess I was bypassed, but um, 
my name doesn't appear on the PDN of, I think, last week's issue. And I said, what happened? Then um, three or four years ago, I received a letter from the governor's office that uh, the land trusts are on hold, and then it says to contact your senator. But at that time, I do not know any senator. But just recently, I have um, con contact with um, Senator Dennis Rodriguez. Then now I'm getting to know, um, oh, I forgot his other name. But I was trying to get, um, I think that's my nephew, is Senator Stevies. But somehow I couldn't know availability. So I do not know what's happening. But also, um, I have a few questions. After uh, reading this, uh, this information, my questions were answered. I said, who, what is the prerequisite or criteria for the applicants? I know it says native Chamorro or indigenous Chamorros, but how do you identify indigenous Chamorros? But then it says here um, by the Organic Act, but I thought it was people born before 1950 or 1950. That's, to me, that's what I consider indigenous Chamorros. Like then I read on the paper, Miss. Mr. Arnold Davis, he's still pursuing that he he is uh, he wanted to apply for a land trust, and I said, oh, that's a no-no. But why can we adopt or like the Hawaiians? They wanted nobody can own land or buy land except native Hawaiians or the Saipanese. Also in Saipan, you cannot buy or own land. But if you buy, you have to register it to a uh, Saipanese, like some of my relatives did. So, I don't know. And also, the last question is, if you obtain a land lease, can you sublease the land? I think, I think you cannot do that, but I know some people are subleasing it from the land, that's land trust. So I guess it has to be monitored and I guess hire people to check. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kagua. Um, okay, and this telephone number that you have here is current, right? Okay, so we've noted your questions and uh, we'll be sure to make contact to um, at least answer these questions. Those answers are actually in the law. Okay. Uh, Ms. Trini Torres. So, Kuna Agazanga, I voice. Anyway. Buenas, Wagadesina, in Combide Publico. Jesus Masi, Naman Matu, and Iman Matu Guinea. Uh, are, Spencer, not, are you a CLTC applicant? Do you, do you ahi, ahi, lo hagasa u kalamtini okay, chamor eh, land okay, trust. Okay, and now if I can call if I was I was just asking, are you a CLTC applicant? That's all I was ahi, asking. Okay, fine. Lo proceed. hagasa u patehi tanot okay. chamoro. Pro proceed. Etike, nangaga gyogini cha magahaga u kini. Magahaga u gi chamor nation, jane tau tomo na native rights. Afa na siga magomented ha. Zagasa unana yo problema anu question shafa sa meke man man problema hagasa meke problema jina mahano mage pa be kwa dia hafa bidan mimitsu sa go go hata no o jo papa si taksu o papa si kada sakan itaks mami lo ita utauta man Manisisita ajudanti gini hamtu Zati nasune in Intolaika ipude Istaba no I commission to misisidi hafa todo Pes mak entrega gati gisena do 
lo guahane inu tidinan chike no lo ke uri papara jangin engin pabenanga para hamju pandisi di todu business le sina fa mangalamtin ti de biambi sa guahan ju ke no timan chamoro hungan ja ti de binem van entalombi ja hungan guaha ja gua agene no problem mau ni no sei tanu tanu tau tau ta tanu tau tau ta jen man ma te man na ta sa man gera pun estina tanu para i tau tau ta jani ta no ta na man ma ta ta ti ma le le fo sa so ma sa go gui na seng song cho cho go ja dong ku lu jun na song song ja man ma i pi to do ja de bi ni ti ngo na sto ran mi cho sa fanal me gan jo tin tin wo tin tin stu tu de to sto den mi jo man nan bi jo jong kan bula gui ni no de bi na fi na ma to na ma to ho gui ni sa gua gui ni gi rules and regulation de bi ni ma to like kan ti di nan chi ja de bi di to 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 fan dan na jo ma di si di a ti pra ham jo wa ni senador se ta no Tanu ni ya to do it to to ta. Ati ham jo ha. Put for board like kunsudera eno. Sa jo na bula problema sangin hafa no problema man mama po di komisyon po fangalamtin sa gwa hasta rules nisu ka mangalamtin sa pi man bistiga talo. Sa gwa na man lalat yam bisa sa sumano pa meeting niya. Jista manis pipio sa lapit ng manu po ma haji sinano sumer sumer afa mui mui di tanu mukrukonosi jo ma midi pa itau tau tani taja sa lapinya sa mika itau tau tama mobli fiot pa guni siya mika ina tau tau sa ni jo siya ang kumbida magi jo afa pa itano ta afa parehita. Sa hunga may ka problema, manasono guini po tono. Sa itaw tata pa mono siya guato, ang ginsiya mo ki tao to sa nijong. Sa guana yung guini na tao tao gi manaholo nga manuhutun ka pura problema. Anafa manafa na plata, ti managas ka. Esta goji part, ni kadara tu manokahu basula ka. Esta diapers, esta pampers guini manggagi. Kusadera, the commission debit to fund majuna sa agasa ma agasa masangan na bula applicants lo tima a update idunya information ni mana na manasagad dan haji siya dan bistagwahu astapa wanunun siya gi gi programata programan tamoro da be faizin talo si kawu kusina na kalamtin ito disti agagas da wagadesi lo Manisita ia judan ti, ije judan mijo. Saan man 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 malingo i tau tau i aplik, eji man man apply, jadi makok kontak, haji poki nontak. Hamju nai debitin info mai tau tau, na hey, na di nanti ne address mijo jadi mana na peben spia hamju. Pus estinai ufafasinanjo daman debi di inatsinaha da inaposibli ang pentalay ka gwini guaha po desti rules and regulation po madiskuta na fanaw no itaw taw ta sa tiparaham juga da mege guaha gwini man lalachi Okay, so Okay, da wagadesi layanin che gwisti Unggan magahira no Sisters Masi. Um, I agree. Ms. De La Cruz. Ms. De La Cruz, you are a I'm an 2005 applicant. applicant. Yes. Okay. I'm here today because I am, I've been, um, I received this uh, Jumar Landra's paper and I've been waiting for so many years and I'm tired running around with DCL in Tizen, in Aganya, 
in ITC building. And today I come because all, all the answers that it ever gave me is, I'll call you and get back to you later, but it's been 22 years and I still haven't got a piece of property. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I feel mad or sad, or, but I'm tired running around. I work, I don't have time to go look for Chamorro Land Trust to tell me what piece of property I got. In 2005, I signed a paper. They tell me I need to go get a severe, but I don't know what severe. There's a piece of property, I got a map here that I don't even know what village it's from and it has my name on it and I've been going to them to ask them to, how do I get this? They said a land agent was supposed to come and show me the property, but nobody's called me, no one's uh, called my number. I've always updated myself with them. I just recently did one this year in uh, January and I'm tired and only uh, last week or this week the the reception called me back and told me it's on hold right now because of this this um, hearing that's out now. My thing is, I want them to tell me what I want to hear. Do I have a piece of property or do I wait another another 10 more years for them to show me this, this land? My sister introduced me to this, um, this surveyor that was under um, Milton Santos, and I paid this guy. He never showed me the property that Chamorro Lantris has on file. And I want, I want them to answer me, where, where do I stand right now? Because I have five kids, they already graduated. I've, I'm going to have seven grandkids and I still don't have a property. I have a piece of paper that says I have a piece of property, but I have never saw it or seen it or gone out there to see it. That's all I came here for. But you did receive notification that you were going to be awarded a lease. Yes. Okay. Now, when you signed up, is it under the name Linda C. De La Cruz? Um, if we were to go back and look at the files. I'm divorced now, so I did update my my file. So, okay, it's but when you when you first applied under under what name was uh, the applicant? Renoco, Renoco. But I'm back to my maiden name. Okay. So, can you make sure you pass that information to the staff, uh, so that if we go back to check the files, we're not we're not looking for Linda De La Cruz. We're looking for the name or that you used back in 2005, yes. okay? All right, thank you very much, Linda. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call up the next set of panelists. Um, yeah, Tenrita's on the, Tenrita's on the next, uh, on the, yeah. Uh, Doris Mitchell, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kowalski or D.S. Kowalski. Dalzak Kowalski. Um, Austin, wait, you're not gonna, okay. Um, Mari Ganji. Okay, you see Mari Ganji? Hago, Mrs. Genji? Ah, pues, para que la masa que ni da un cuentos. Uh, well, there's Maria, and then I have Crystal, and then Mrs. Cruz. Okay. Uh, so I have a Kowalski that signed up. I guess not here. All right. We'll go ahead and we'll start with uh, Mrs. Cruz.
I, um, so, Mrs. Cruz, you are a 1995 applicant. Yes, yes. I was. Okay, yes, please proceed. I am. Okay. Okay. Um, I went ahead and did some kind of chronological order of the event that I have gone through regarding the Tomorrowland Trust application that I submitted. In 1995, I applied for the, I submitted my application. I was made to pay $50 right. at that time. In 2003, I paid an additional $100 for the 99 years lease. I was gracious enough to give an additional $1 for tip, hoping and praying that I will be given the opportunity to be given and awarded the land that I prayed for. I was born and raised in that piece of land. It's not like I am greedy that I wanted a whole lot of land. It's just where I was born in as Lucas on the cliff line. It is not for wealth, it is for the reason of sentimental value. And if you all agree with me, Sentimental value has no money uh, attached to that because your sentimental feelings, your reasons, and everything that pertains to your sentiment is very in-depth with a person who is a Christian and who is Chamorro especially. Let me tell you, Mr. Um, oh. I'm sorry I did not uh, address the uh, speaker and the vice speaker, but that's okay. Uh, it can always come later, right? So, okay, I, I thank all of you for inviting us here. Okay, so what happened was um, 2015, actually in 2012, my husband was getting very fragile and sick and he was on his last journey. So what happened was we were referred to Seattle VA Hospital for his health care. So we traveled back there to Washington State. We lived there since 2012. Until 2015, he decided to come home. He wanted to come home. I brought him back because he pleaded to me that uh, he wanted to come home one more time, see his birthplace, and just die here. So he got his wish, senators and all of you. And I prayed to God, you know, that as a wife of 56 years, I was able to give him his last wish. But the other wish that we were hoping and praying ever since, 1995 was never a reality for our kids. In, in 2015, the governor write here his letter. I received this letter when I was off island. I told my son who was here, I said, just keep that letter, letter and I will go over it when I come home. But because of my husband's situation, I wasn't able to attend to this letter, not knowing that it is about the, the, the application that I submitted. So after my husband passed away in 2016, uh, it was early this year because I was still mourning. It was hard, you know, having him to leave me and the family. So. Earlier this year, I think it was in February or March, I called up the Lieutenant Governor's office. And I asked, I spoke to the secretary, and I asked if I can have an appointment to come in. 
to discuss this letter with the lieutenant governor because it's signed by, uh, by uh, the governor, but at the time the governor, I suppose, was off island. So he, he became the uh, LT uh, Tenorio Bike, became the acting governor. So with that concern, uh, it really troubled me. I said, there must be something going on that they did not, because I told the secretary that I wanted to come in and talk to him about this letter. Because I want to see that this thing becomes a reality. I want to go home to Thalofofo and stay there before I die. But nothing happened. And then two weeks, two, two, about a month ago, this thing sufficed, you know. And, you know, senators, and uh, I, it, it's really heartbreaking that people that we trusted will do this to us. I can't believe, I can't believe that they are in there working for the government and they cannot even protect the people of Guam. This Tomorrowland Trust became a law. It was through the late Senator Paul Calvo, if I am not mistaken. I'm forgetting already, I'm already 81. So excuse me, bear with me. So when this law became, became a law, there was a, a struggle, a struggle by the late Senator Angel Santos and his people. Yeah. These people were the Tomoru people at heart. The Tomoru people like me, like Trini, mm -hmm. like a lot more who have died. A lot of us have, have gone by already. Not so many of us are still alive. If I look around, I didn't see him, I didn't see him, I didn't see, oh, yes, the, the senator back here behind me, yes. Yeah. I saw Tita Ganji there, yeah. we were together, but nothing happens. We never get what we ask what, and what we applied for. And we're not like, we don't wanna pay for it. With my good heart, I went ahead and, and I told my husband, I said, let's do this because this is for our kids. And he agreed to me and he said, go ahead. Okay, so you. I went and I, and, I, and I did what I have to do. And the government shut us down. They never even communicated with us. Let me tell you something, senators, good senators. Ms. Cruz, you're gonna need you, to wrap it up. You are, you are the lawmakers. You are responsible for this land trust. Put your acts together, come together, doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, Independent, I really don't care. Come together for the people of Guam. Fix this because a lot of us are already gone. Yes, ma'am. So for the remaining of, the, uh, of my, uh, my testimony here, I would like to make the directors, the commissioners know that I don't want an exchange of land from the property that I am applying. That property is the so-called reservation area in Talofofu. There's where I was born and raised and I grew up there. And I went back through the Ariendu thing and I was farming there with my family. The only time we got out from there was when my husband suffered heart attack and we, we had to go off island. But oh. we were farming that land. All right, thank you very my much. My house was destroyed by the typhoon and I don't have the money to rebuild it. But okay. please, 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 I don't want any exchange of land. I wanna go home, that's my home. And please, I beg of you all not to allow them to, to exchange that land or give that land to anybody else. If they had already given it to anybody, I want, I want a demand from the legislature, from the senators, to recall that property because that's mine. That is mine. Thank, Thank you. you.
Thank you very much, Mrs. Cruz. I'm going to go ahead and defer to Mrs. Ganji. Good afternoon. Uh, the, the reason why I'm here is my husband is dead already, and my grandchildren are living with me. Um, I want to ask a question whether they are allowed over there or because I allow them to stay there with me. Is the man I know? It's under the uh, agriculture land lease. Okay. And actually, I heard that the land, uh, land trust is going to take the agriculture after the expiration of my lease. Is it under Maria Ganji or was it under your husband? It's under my husband. Okay, and what was his name? Uh, Hugo Z. Ganji. How's that his first name? How's it on there? Hugo, H U G O, Galantu Ganji. Okay. All right. So, so basically, your question is: Are you? Are they going to take that land away? That's what I'm asking. Okay, uh, we won't be able to answer that tonight. But we've noted that, and that property was originally under the name of Hugo Sugo Ganji. Yeah. Right. That's my husband. All right. And uh, so we'll um, we'll look into that. And now. Your your number is uh, current, correct? I beg your pardon. It, it, uh, your telephone number? That's six three three six six nine six. Okay. All right. All right. Well, uh, do you have anything else? That's all. And uh, where do we, if we are supposed to pay for the land trust, where do we go and pay? That's the only thing I'm concerned. Okay. It's right. paying so that I, they won't take the land from me because my children are staying there. Okay. Uh, Crystal, are you, is, are you related to Mrs. Ganji? Yes, I'm her daughter-in-law, but I have my own uh, concerns. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we got your contact number, Mrs. Ganji, and basically your question is the issue about You've been told that the land might be taken away, and also where do you pay for the land? Yeah, Correct. that's my concern. Okay. <laughs> we won't, we, we won't be, be able... We because won't. I don't want my children to be all over the island. Just stay there in the same place, whatever, if they really want to stay. Okay. You know, so okay. that will be good. All right. Thank we, you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ganji. Uh, Crystal? Um, yes, I'm Crystal Ganji, and I really appreciate you coming together and listening to our concerns today. Um, my, my mother um, owned property since the 70s. It was, I guess, called a rendu before, I'm not sure. And then it became the land trust, and she had an acre. And I practically grew up there, helping her, you know, farming and taking care of animals and so forth. And then. Um, in 2016, my mom passed away, and at that time, I, I did not apply yet for her because she already owned one, and I had grown up there, so I didn't feel like I needed to apply or anything for my own property. But when she passed away, um, I was told that they're going to take the property away from us and that I should go in and find out what's going on. Um, so I went in, and I found out that we had, from one acre, we only have now half an acre. But I was still appreciative with that because, you know, I understand rules change and laws change and so forth. So I was happy with having half an acre. I was just really wanted to have something for my children and my family to live on. And that land was like a home for us. I mean, I grew up there and put so much time and energy and everything into that property and I didn't want to lose it, you know. So it really was difficult if I already had lost my mother 
and I didn't want to lose something that she cherished for many years. So I was so grateful that at least we had half an acre. And so I applied for the land in 2016, and they actually really helped me in the Chamorro Land Trust to make sure I did all the right paperwork and that I didn't lose it. And they took good care of me, you know, and made sure that I, I did everything I needed to do. And I even have a lease now, and I'm really thankful. But what I'm just worried is that, you know, those that inherited the land from their parents, that I really hope that, you know, they don't take it from us. Because even though I'm just only a 2016 applicant, but I have been staying in that property since I was three years old. And, it, you know, it's something that I... It's part of my family already, and it would be a terrible thing. It would just, you know, be taken away when I feel like I haven't done anything wrong to, you know, my family took care of it. We cherished it. We paid everything that we need to do. And we devoted a lot of, you know, energy and time and everything into it. And I just hope that we can still keep it so that the future generation, my children, who are now there taking care of it, can have it too, you know? So it's like inheritance, right? And it's a, actually, we don't really have a place to live on since my, both my parents passed away, my grandfather passed away. It's like everything that we had is we're losing it. And I just don't want to lose this property because we really need a place to call home for our children. Okay, Crystal, and if you so could So my just... concern is that are they going to also take from those that inherited? I mean, that's what my concern is. Okay. Let me, let me just get a couple of pieces of information straight here. The, the property that your parents were living on mm -hmm. uh, was originally Arendo. Yes. Right? Who was the, what was the name of the My original? My mom's name is Julia Lambert. She was Morris at the beginning when she first um, started living there, but then she got remarried. So she's Julia Lambert, though, in her files there in the land trust files. So, so it would be under yeah, Julia, Julia Lambert. Lambert. Okay. And now, then um, in 2016, I took over, so it's now in my name, the files. Oh, okay. So, she, so when she passed away... Yeah, she had filled out a form, and I even signed it, and um, it said that I would to inherit it if anything happened to her, and I did. They, they did respect that, and I was able to... But I still had to apply and make sure I followed all the rules, you know, and right. everything. And I did do all the paperwork. I did the survey. I paid that, and I... You know, all the things I need to do, and I was able to get my lease last year. All right. Now, originally she had a and one acre arendo, and now yes, it's and down then it to a half, a half acre. an acre. Okay. But the thing is, my mom had waited for years to get a lease, and she hadn't, and so it meant a lot to me to finally get it, even though it was right. after she had died already. Now, did you apply for your, under your own name in 2016? Yes, I had to do that and to make sure that, you know, I could keep it. I had to oh, do that. So the, I did. Okay. Apply. And I, you know, like I said, all the papers that they had me fill out and what I needed to do, the verifications and so forth, I did all of that. And I was able to get a lease. I'm a lease owner and I'm very thankful for that. Okay. And I'm just worried that, it, you know, since they took half an acre away, I don't want to lose the last half acre that we have. I understand. So that's just my concerns. Where's this area at? Um, Laddie Plantation. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you very much. You got any more? Oh, no, that's okay. it. Okay, all right. Ms. Mitchell? Uh, please turn on your mic. Sorry. Thank you, senators, for having us tonight. Okay. And Ms. Mitchell, you're a 1995 yes. applicant, correct? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, 2009, I've come in, and I've uh, checked with the CLTC, to do a change of address, because my husband's in the military, so he's traveling frequently, but now I'm here. I live on Guam now, and uh, I thought there was a hold on it. There weren't, they weren't giving out properties to anyone, but come to find out with the news that they started giving out properties, I, I didn't even, I, if I would have known that, I would have gone in and updated my information, but I didn't. Um, so probably advertising it in the paper would have probably helped everyone. But listening to all these men uncles, I'm just, it breaks my heart. Senators, you guys gotta fix this. It's broken. It really is. I wish there was something, you know, that, that, that could help them. It just, the ones that don't have the property, that need it, it's, it's sad, it really is. 
But with mine, I don't know what my situation is, but I am a 1995 um, applicant, but I've never gotten contacted. Were you ever all. informed that you were bypassed? Never. They couldn't contact you? Nothing. There was nothing in your files that said nothing. they couldn't contact you? No, okay. nothing. And then also there was a website. I would go in frequently to check and see if maybe, you know, my time's up, but uh, I don't see that website anymore. Where is it? Uh, did they just stop the connection? I, I don't know. But I used to go in there. It was uh, Guam uh, Portal at one time. Okay. That's, that's, yeah. that's all I have. I just, just fix it right. for the Manamkos. It just breaks my heart, totally. Thank you, Senator Thank you. Ugan, also. Thank you very much for taking the time to share yeah. with us, okay? It's pretty sad. All right. um, I have next, okay, Sizu Osmanse, Mrs. Ganji. Okay, next is a uh, Francis Faria, um, Juan Camacho, Joshua Leon Guerrero, Joshua Leon Guerrero, David Babalta uh, Herrera, Did you see David? Uh, Janet Gozalo. And uh, I have Lenny Fair in here. No? <laughs> and I have Vincent Uggen. Okay, okay, go ahead and just take your time. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll start with uh, uh, Ms. Faria. And Ms. Faria, you are a 1995 applicant, correct? There you go. Buenas, again. Consigue. Consigue. Maragazo, nano. Bay Natungo Hamzu na Ginin Manuzo Magi, so represent Center, if Familiaco Ginin as Nanao, Girosario, Familian Bruno, then Sita Town, Nicamatsu, Familian Aragon. In Fit Machon, Nimalaguzo, na in Taka, then na comprendisa Estigi. Tiningo on uh, this the 1960 Manyakaham Guigi as Tumbu Era na an Tatan Nanao as Tumbu as Tumbu. Pues this the 1960 Manyakaham Guihulu Manlonsoham Babwi Rabbit Manuk Pues in 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 Tanum hafa manu sinya paralina la mami. Zaman magu fam ezigi sinin tin familia sa hami mandadanya zen zetsegui. Pue dispues usen hasu naman mafatu hulu kuntodu i gubetnu i sinidor a zabe mentaha sa ti ti be malefa si difuntu Frank Alcon senior. Zane sigi mataka monasti i pama tulaika i arendu para Harlem Gilantras. Besita tahu ti zanya mala isan mena sumasaga isan tati lo asanganya todo na esti arendu esti gi no no tsatsalanya itau toni man man aplika gitano man afam forna ezi e man kilis zano ni man gigi arendu Ezigi kinimprendeko. Pues, kunsigi mona ane 
Mamolika no ani accidentis sa total ki setentay nuebi zamatay. Imbisisita ha ubisisita ilan so sa mikay na memorias ko. Lo matuzo umbiay sa dongkolon tronko ma ma tronka todo i nesina ho man manalo man. Para Pues humano zo guid na temple director si difunto Hussein Cruz o Faisen. Zongan si gyan na dos magamento sa malago na be naigi takti ni papetto ni infitma ni arendo. Infitma ito na papir ni arendo sa man stabahan gigi halong. Ano man lalang siyam, yun na kaskas ang todo. Lo ane matui kubet nun sa lek na po fan mahar sa zi gima ni Astumbo Garden mana fan lat tuzungham gi katsada. Pes edzu edzu na tempo na infitma i arendo para si tataho itseluhu palaan itselunya si Vicente Zangwaho. Lo ane konsigi mo na zamata si tatao o faisen si difunto director Zocus. Pesungan guaha na empleyao humami hulo zamatse kitano. Masoda na keep out private property. Iboy o muto za pegao lo na izo ni gubet no zo natao no. Ane konsigi mo na no despues mata i tato humano zotse ki otro na director si Frank Castro ane si Frank Castro humuzung na taze gubet no serapi niya tisine tato hafa zobe pues konsigya mo na humano talo zo malio zan otro na director si estazo todo nufigan nesti i tratamento ni i diretso para i tato guam i tsamoro Peso malian zan dispuas ay dispensado lo pura difunto. Malian zan si difunto manti. Zesta asoda si manti na hunggan ilahi apritehi zo zan i familia ko ni i ginin i arendo pues na i humano. Zan esti arendo no na i mapega Nitsuka hagu no sinidot akun fine ni na fumit mai zi aplikasyon gya gi 1995. Matson ni kao tati sa reglamento mo na itautaw ariendo. Law mungi. Pwes pa ungan matay sa manti. Ungan humano zo fa na esti pa ako na administrador di land trust. Za edzo o fafaisin i ane i patintataw sa edzi pateko gifon niya o honggi za no respeta i itinigi i ufitma na esti gubet no mano ne malun za nisita itano para skwela para hafa na presiso para itinauto sempre manakyo otso Lugar, ay di ba madula la ka? Lo, ukumpendi ito sa gaiki pa ako ay zunhano. Ano yung gagawag tatisti ay patin tatao, patin tiyo sa nitselu, masangan yun na tagin ang taigwini, tagin ang taigwini. Masyati may dukaho lo humano sa ospipya, kwahagwi palaan sumasaga sa hunggan, Humuzungzo na palabras kini ni Lantras na sumasagasti na palaan esta 10 anos guigya ni sari iarendong tatao tazahan, tazakande. Pwes hanzo pa ako todo o fafaisin. Deka ipapit siya gwi halong sa Di ba yung panapunta ko na yung mga kanulotto pa ako para ang kilisano? Logwa halin ni Eo na isti na palaan, ano isti otro na palaan. Gwiza mamamati gwi hulo gwi astumbo 
bandan mami. Pues pa ako hanggang manayo sa papeto, yeah, whatever it is. Lo gaikyo kisagan hano. Is this the 30 years too late pagwa? Under any finet na si istatao mo manayo niya rendo, no? Si tatao. How do you know? Si Ignacio Rivera Camacho. Okay. All right. Put for board. Studia tatisti sa utunga na todos tisas makompendi tiga sti umbiha amenta put i arendo. Okay. Ilahi ilekna na i arendo mo fo na ki finet na na mamfit ma. Ngan din ang sino na kim. The guy gives you power and manayo. The extra power to pursue. No, us people mungi or face ni commission para mungi surveyor sa guide zonia zonia. Lo pinitizo lo polo sa mababa ikahon. Pinitizo ang yung tungo na tisinya makanta kamsa ni surveyor sa mangaygi kihulo. The proper must the song and put in them. Okay. Lo is pia put for board. Itin auto. So, one time we need to turn in. Yes. The tenant could have sonu, I had a zone and manga, it was senior zo, so maga. Okay. Lo is tratamento, it's a moral. Taza respeto. Sizus masi. Sizus masi, Ms. Faria. Mr. Camacho. Mr. Yes, Mr. Camacho, Chairman. so you are a 1995 uh, applicant, okay. correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before I proceed, I might just go a little bit over five minutes, and, uh, and I have a chronology here of what's happened um, to my case. So well, if I may I, ask a waiver on that five minutes? No, I, I, everybody is... Everybody is well, know, some didn't do the five minutes. Well, please. And we have waited 23 years. Please, we will adhere to the five-minute rule. Okay, okay, I'll proceed. And you can turn in your your uh, written testimony with the details on it. Okay. All right, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, honourable members, on December 1995, application for the Chamorros, the indigenous, was open for Chamorro land trust. Several years later, the processing of, ap of applicants commenced. Once the requirement for applicants, as we were told, was proof of indigenous background, such as documents needed from public health. That document is birth certificate to certify that you're Chamorro and born in Guam. Later on, we were told that the power of attorney, one each son, is needed because my two sons were off island, one being in a, a student, one being a student, and the other in the military. That is, that this is the required, this is required in order for my wife to proceed with my son's application. After acquiring such documents, we were told we need to select a surveyor to survey property selected. However, we were told that only one son is in the system and the other son cannot be processed because it's not showing at a computer. Since I really have no proof at the time, we opted to skip that part on the property for the son not showing until we have the proof that we did apply for him. Then we will proceed on that. After we selected one property, the surveyor surveyed the land in November 1, 2006. From that time on, we were told from time to time and again and again, every time we made a follow-up with CLT that they cannot proceed with the execution of the lease because the surveyor never submitted his map to CLT up to present since November 1st, 2006, although we paid. Because of this obstacle, I asked CLT, how do we re rectify this problem? I was then told to write to Peel's board about the surveyor problem not submitting his map to CLT for us. I did email the e-board chair of Pills regarding this matter, but there was never a response. And because of this, I got me a hard copy and handed it over to their office at Third Floor Bank of Guam, Upper Tumen Brands. After several follow-ups, perhaps visits and phone, personal visits and phone calls with Pills, and nothing happened. I gave up on my follow-up with no results, nothing. The only person that I ever made contact there was a Pacific Islander, but nothing from the board themselves. I then gave up, and now I was stuck with nothing coming from CLT or Pills to take action with a surveyor. Needless to mention, I have spoken to, sort of, to the surveyor personally over the phone numerous times and, vis and even visited his resident, but still to no avail. At this point in time, only one property surveyed since my other son's application is still not showing the system again, the computer when we inquired. However, PDN 
to CLT, Tomorrowland Trust, published the applicant's listing on January 2nd, 2009, of those applied, and yes, indeed, my other son's name was showing. This is why we kept a copy of this publication in order to file a pres and present, in order uh, for this publication and our file to present to CLT as proof, and subsequently, my son was put in the system. But, she, but as CLT pursuing my second son's application, we came to a stumbling block on this since January 2009 to present as the selection for his property got into a circus. We were shown a property on Natibu Road, Wai Then a few, then a few weeks later, to the one in the vicinity stockpile of concrete posts of Wai again, but nothing happens after several follow-ups in and out of CLT. Few months later, I was told that we cannot have the property on both because it is not being surveyed. But I've seen people staying on these areas as COT was showing me these places, some with a relatively decent building to some kind of makeshift building, save enough for shelter. Later on again, and maybe a few months, I was shown a property off Route 3 by entrance to Swamp Road, Dedudu, only to find out later, and after a few weeks again, that we cannot, or my son cannot have the property. And as I told my, and as I told my son, he told me that, never mind that, because until COT get their act together, then maybe I will proceed on this. But for now, forget it, because we're just being jerked around, which I totally agreed. I follow up on CLT this year several times and was later told on that everything on hope or age's opinion due to a Davis case in court. Then this year I was told that the regional power of attorneys on both files on my sons are missing to, uh, to resubmit another regional power of attorneys. Really? Two regional missing power of attorneys on two separate files? Is this a coincidence or a sabotage again as a delay tactic for processing for whatever reasons? I don't know. Then, lo and behold, I saw the paper regarding the land clearing deal in Barragada Heights. And I, says, and I said, huh? Age's opinion, huh? To cease and desist, but Landagatsung, what is Barragada Heights a uh, fiasco? Over a coffee meet with friends, one responding affirming Ombri Pari, Pari Politico Elitico, Elitisne. Well, I guess we go figure. How I feel about CLT? The bottom line is lack of leadership on CLT's management and the board members. That is perhaps due to incompetency or complacency. However, I have made personal contacts with some of CLT staff, and they are, in fact, very competent. But when the top chain does not have the leadership, then the roof will collapse, and this is where CLT is now, crash and burn. There was an oversight hearing, and the late Senator Ben Pangilinan was alive, and after he passed away, nothing happened again at CLT, and it's back to the same old dance. Yes, the nuclear bomb approach, reforming bill from the good Senator Frank Ogun is what we needed to rectify all these problems. And yes, CLT is inundated with real problems after problems. Challenge is not the better word here, but for lack of explicitives, I opted to go with the releasing of the nuclear cell, as our good Senator Ogun proposed, so that once and for all, CLT will have better direction with better rules, better laws and rules and regulations with CT, uh, CLT. Furthermore, we feel like we are cheated and treated like dirt, as if our children does not deserve or have no rights to own land. I cannot speak for all or others present here tonight, but I feel and almost certain that if not all, at least some share and echo the same sentiments I have mentioned. What is COT's mission? It is, the third, is it to serve the elitists by selecting prime lots and accelerated processing of their applications? Whether or not all documents are completed and processed with disregard and or neglect of the law? Recommendation, put CLT on receivership independent of our executive and legislative leaders and be audited from time to time by an independent licensed auditor and co-audited also with another licensed auditor. This will provide fairness, impartiality, transparency, and most of all, accountability. The only exception to legislative interference is when there is need for scrutiny, such as this public hearing, oversight hearing tonight. Another option, list all CLT land out of independent of federal support grants and use the income to provide housing for low-income bracket family and for the needy such as disabled folks and homeless. The okay, rest Mr. of the Camacho, money the government please, pays please, their debts please wrap it up. and improve education, public health and public safety and it must be audited and co-audited as well. In this way, the government don't have to raise probably taxes for either personal and business wise to subsidize its debt obligations. Question, how do we solve the non-submission of maps further, to further process CLT applicants what the plan does COT have to survey have to the surveyor who got paid and did not finish his job? How do they sanction non-compliant surveyors? Do we really have to select a surveyor from the COT listing? Why, why were we rejected to select property? What does it really take to get assigned a property? 
Was please, please wrap it up, Mr. Camacho. Your five minutes is up. I got about two, two more pages, well, sir. Well, turn in your written testimony. Everybody's gotten their testimony in in five minutes. Thank you. Okay, sir, I'll, I'll just wrap it up. At this time, I would like to extend my apology and I should offend anybody regarding my testimony as this is just business and nothing personal. Thank you all for your time and effort and taking time out from our busy schedule, from your busy schedule, to be present here this afternoon or tonight for this oversight hearing and affording me this opportunity to vent my frustration and big time disappointment of my issues and concern with CLT. God bless us all. Thank you very much. Please leave your written testimony with the staff. Yes, sir. Okay? Thank you very much. Ms. Gozalo? Yes. Yes. Gozalo. Okay. Good evening, Senator, Speaker, Vice Speaker. And thank Please you speak for closer this into the mic. Mm -hmm. Ms. Gozalo, you are a 1995 applicant, correct? Um, I believe it's. You wrote January. here 1995. I, I was mistaken, sir. It's, no, it was January of 1996. Nine, okay, fine. All right, please proceed. Okay, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and, and read a letter that I had written to the Chamorland Trust just last week on the 15th. And only because I really, it's been 40 years. I don't wanna go off, I don't wanna break down. So I'd just like to, and what I'm gonna speak of is a property, I, ha I have a land use permit 555 in Barragata. Um, the property is known as the Bon and Magus in Tai. In the early 1970s, um, my uncle, my mother's oldest brother, Tomas P. Q. Tenorio, lived in Tai. He raised his family in Tai. He had apprised, he told my mother that there was property for. Uh, ready for land use, you, you know, land use permits. So my mother went with, to land management. As a matter of fact, she was an employee of land management. And uh, she was shown a property in Tai. She was shown where it was. So in the early, in the late 70s, my parents started to clear the property and started to farm, cultivate that property. Okay, and we've done that from we make payments, annual payments of $40, until my mother was told by land management that they couldn't accept payments anymore because the Chamorro Land Trust was created, <coughs> but that we could continue to farm that property and occupy that property until such time we were notified by Chamorro Land Trust what we needed to do, okay? So my father, my father, my mother, my siblings, my children have farmed that property. We grew up there. My father planted trees where the land agent showed him, gave him an idea of what, where the boundaries were. Coconut trees, mango trees, tangerine trees, you name it, vegetables, okay? In, in 2005, my father was at the property doing what he does, farming, when a Alan Kwan approached him and asked him what he was doing there. And my father responded, I'm farming. Kwan proceeded to tell him he didn't belong there. You don't belong here. You need to leave. Again, my father repeated himself and told him, we have farm this land, we have land use permit. You know, we've been here, it was what, in 2000, about 29, 30 years. And Quan insisted that he leave because he didn't belong there. My father finally told him, he goes, well, you know, we have a permit. As a matter of fact, my wife works with the Department of Land Management. I'm sure she's not gonna, you know, we're not gonna be doing something that's illegal. Upon hearing my mother's name, and by the way, her name is Vicente Tenorio Gozalo. She was a land, ab land abstractor three with land management. At hearing that, that is when Quan left. Okay. Sometime in 2005, um, also Mariano Nededuk, who is the husband, he's my cousin, my cousin's husband. 
he had told me that Wanak Faji showed, showed up at the property one day and told him the property that I'd been farming was his. As a matter of fact, he claimed not just my property, the adjacent property that belonged to my uncle, Tomas Piku Tenorio, and Mariano Nedidok's property. That was in 2005. I don't know where or how it became his property. I've never seen him down there. He's never farmed that land, you know. Um, we have, there are many families that know my father there. In 2017, my mother had to come back for, um, there was a death in the family. So my parents come back. My par what my parents do is, you know, they have five kids. We don't, some live in the mainland, some live here. So they divide their time. One, one year there, when you're here. They come home. My father, as soon as he comes home, he goes down to the property, as always, to check on the mangoes, to check on, just to see the land, and to take, you know, take the fruits that he has planted. The site there, he fell and he had a stroke because somebody had cleared that property. I would say about 40 years. Do you know what it's like to farm and cultivate land and then one year you go there and it's down to nothing? I went to Chamor Land Trust and I've asked about this property. The first time I went in, which was in 2005, I went down when they were located in Anigua. I was told I'm in the right property, but I just had to wait to be contacted by somebody from Chamor Land Trust. Never happens. In 2017, when this happened with my father and I went in, I was told, I was shown a map. Well, ma'am, you've been on the property, on the wrong property you're really supposed to be over here. But guess what? Somebody built a house there. So we'll have to find you something else. How, how do I go from farming here, and they're telling me my property's here, and somebody's already built a house there. That person's been there even before I came here. So I don't know who the three stooges are between Alan Kwan, Wanak Faji, Gumatalto. I don't know who all was back there. I mean, I feel sorry for the staff of Chamorro Land Trust today because I think they've earned a lot of the, I hate to say, scam from staff that were there before. Okay. In, so just more recent, so like I said, in 2017, my, my parents aren't here. You're fired. 2018. Your five minutes is up. I'm sorry. Okay. I, can I just leave this letter of mine? Yes, please. Okay. Please. I'm, I'm sure the detailed information is in there. Right? Yes. I just want to ask one question. The Arendo property that you're talking about, does that go back to Tomas Tenorio? Yes, they're adjacent right next to it. Okay, fine. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't have any more on the list. Oh, Mr. Ogun, it's been so. Uh -uh. Okay. Mr. Vincent Ogun, you're a 1995 applicant, no? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I don't know the law, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to do. Uh, my problem is my land's been removed from me um, because I got married in 2011. I had that property since 95, 96, something like that. Um, I've been working that land, paying tax on that land, and everything. I was a homeless veteran. 
I was homeless, disabled veteran, and that was my therapy. Um, 2016, no, 2016, I, I asked uh, Mr. Borja, the director, if it can help me re-transfer my land to somewhere I can plant better, because where I was is a lot of rocks and stuff, so I'm always planting in buckets or tires. You know. um, so, you know, he gave me his blessing, go, you know, go find something that's suitable for what you need, and we see who owns the property, or if it's land trust or whatever. I found a, a, a land, but they cannot locate the owner that the Chamorro Land Trust gave it to. So I, uh, I was instructed to, you know, find another one. So, okay, I found another one. Went back to the Land Trust and I said, I'm sorry, but we have to uh, disqualify you of your property. I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, you got married? I'm like, yes, I did. I'm like, well, a husband and a wife cannot hold a property. It's like, before I got married, I came to you guys, I asked you guys, okay, my fiance has her own land for her kids. I have my land for my goddaughter. I don't have kids. Well, now I do. Um, my wife and I adopted one. But I have nothing, you know? Uh, five months after the property has been removed from me, my health has been declining. My doctor, my psychiatrist, my therapist, they're all freaking out like, what the heck happened? I'm on all kind of medication now. Um, uh, Mr. Lazama used to be the mayor of Jigo. He, he, he will tell you, you know, because sometimes he come up when they find used tin that I can use to construct. I used to live in a canopy, you know, catching rainwater and all that. But anyway, I cannot find anything in here to, to justify my disqualification. And I found something else in here that, so I'm supposed to have a, a written document, right? That's what it says here. I was given a verbal I was told 30 days you got to find a relative or somebody qualified to take that land from you or we will remove it. I don't know about you guys, but you, you know, you work your butt off, you know, to hold on to that very little dignity you have. And then for somebody just to pull you right out from under your feet, you know, I told my doctors and everybody, you know what? I give up. You know, uh, don't know what to do already, and I don't know where to go. Is I don't know. Is this it? This is the law for land trust or anything else? Because I could not find nothing here. Okay, uh, one minute left. Okay, um, other one, uh, squatters that somehow was given the opportunity to rush and get somebody qualified so they, the squatter can stay. Okay, now I brought this up many, many times. My wife's property smells like the dump because the squatters are dumping and dumping and dumping. Mr. Borja notified these people that in 2015, because I begged Mr. Borja, please, sir, come up and stop this, you know? I, I, I don't care, stop this, because the rats are this big. Okay, running, they're chewing the, the wires on my truck, because of my disability, my truck hardly moves, only to take kids to and from school. Um, I don't know what's the law about that, but to me, that's unfair for a squatter to have that property while well, all these people here are waiting for theirs. Um, these folks are from Saipan and Philippines. I'm confused with that part, but I'm hearing their testimony here and last week, Friday, 
I was scratching my head like, my God, where I live is mostly Chukis, Filipinos. <laughs> and like, these folks here are like, wow, this is something else. If you guys want to come up to my wife's property and look at what I'm saying, it'll shock you guys. It, it shocked the director of 2015, you know. So, so Mr. Ogan, may I ask, um, so the, the original application was under your name, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. And then what was the name of, um, oh, can you provide the name to the staff of your wife that, that you know, your wife, that as a result then you lost your land when you got married? So just provide that to the staff, please. Okay. Uh, can I, I know my time's up. Can I ask you a question? Or if you know anybody here that can answer it. I need a website to submit a statement because, you know, I, I don't want to waste people's time here. Yeah, they'll provide you an email okay. address. The Mayor Bob there will, will give you an address. Okay. Oh, okay. That's not, thank you very much, Mr. Ogun. And finally, I, I have... Uh, I don't Mr. know how to do this. That's not. Um, Carlos Laguana? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Laguana, you're a 1995 applicant, correct? Please turn on the mic. Okay. Okay. Mr. Okay. When I was told to some Zoo, you should not do it. Carlos Laguana, Zoo, no, 1995, Mana Pico, no, but it's a moral land trust that we are at Tempunu. Taza no Taza Tano Mami Gina Gina on who was a man applicazo. The Estima Postna no Sakan no a Faisen Zoos, the Gaussi, Kamishita, a Gaussi, the Anaholums and applications, a Faisen Zuko, Koshina no Matolekam, is Babana Inu Nizoku, Shap Malago, Pofan Hotsaguma, Sataza Gumba Nagao. Pesma umano gato pa it sa Moreland Trust the komento sa nizi todo sa it at to endu sa it sa Moreland Trust the masangani na leng nga sina sina masawig pesma mat matulaika pes siya per pisigi buwan sa anam anam survey it ano na yung gaw the mangasta no mas di meet meet presyo para ma para ma survey the Zamalagona, Yagazang in Pomatsuli, or Pomatsuli, Tati and Anna Banaplica, we go. Lokegi, Milo Mishentus, Lubentai size. The Zamalagona, Parapo, Insigilas, Pofanatsaguma, Zena Matalekam, the Dosh. Compendia, Afaleleco? Lowy, two thousand sixteen, Namanaplica? I am nineteen ninety six. Ninety-six. Muna igi no autoridad para o ma survey. Okay. The guy gin on the pago. Gazuna sola needing to put si para. All right. Pues. Um, so. I've been in English as a para pro ma comprendin here for my login. Sir. Tada gua. Tada gua. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, you did did you get a, a a lease awarded to you? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to point. Your name, ma'am? My name is Carmen Cita Laguanya. Yes, yes I did. Um it was because I had <clears throat> just to get the lease was <sighs> was a lengthy time I had to I literally had to take a lease agreement and make sure that it was signed by Chamor Land Trust and then literally walk it over to the governor's office have it signed over there and then bring it right back down to Chamor Land Trust to make sure that it was processed correctly nothing was bypassed in terms of their procedures 
The only thing different was that I could not be a part of the, the group when they have, I guess, the presentation of all the leases with the governor um, to, to have it all signed and issued out to the applicants or the leasees. So that was the only thing. And that's because it was held up in Chamorland Trust for different kinds of reasons. But when I turned the age of 18, my father took me to go and apply, and I'm a grandmother. I have four children, and every time I walked into Chamorro Lantris, I always asked, am I gonna wait till I die until land comes for, for me, at least to, to build for, for my family? Or my father's gonna pass, and he's never gonna see one of us you know, so, so let me, get let me, that. Let me try to understand this. You got a piece of paper from CLTC awarding you a lease for a residential lot? Mm. No. Okay. I went into follow up in 2015 because I had heard, I had heard, you know, a certain, I, I had heard that they were issuing out properties. So yeah. I went in 2015 to inquire about it. I was told that. I was told that um, they were only working on 1995 applicants. Mm -hmm. And so they had t I was told that the only way that I can, the only way that I can get further up in the list would be to find someone who was a 1995 applicant and switch with them. That's what I was told. And, but that, that switch hasn't been made. That switch had been made because then later on I, I realized that I could ask my father to switch with me. Okay. And then they told me I would have to get a document, stipulate it, requesting for that switch, have it notarized, and it would go through the process of being approved. And then that's when... When and if it's approved, that's when they'll start the process. Okay. Now, Carlos, uh, have, have, has a lease been awarded to you under your 1995 application? Okay, so the only thing that you're switching is positions then. You're not passing on a lease to your daughter, mm -hmm. right? Because you haven't been awarded. I hear you, Did they ever, expl did you ever inquire why you hadn't been awarded? Since you're a 1995 applicant, and here we are, 2018, have you ever inquired why? Have you ever been informed that you've been bypassed? Oh, yeah, they know. I think in the news, they know. 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 They know when Ron Tehan was the director to inquire about our status. I remember that. All right. We're not going to sort it out here tonight. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, but CLTC is taking note, and, uh, and, and the chairperson did say that uh, they'll be pulling files tonight as, as people. So, um, and plus, we got your contact number, and we'll be following up with that. Okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. That's what she told us. And Thank you, your, your father was my classmate in school. Maligna <laughs> studenti. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't have any more on the list. I will go ahead and ask the senators if they have any uh, comments that they would like to make. I would like to go ahead and uh, start with the speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you have any comments you'd like to make. None. Vice, vice speaker. I would just like to say thank you to all of you who testified today, and um, thank you for your patience, especially on the issues that you are having with the trust. I want to thank the trust commissioners for uh, swift, um, at least the promise of swift response. I think that's what we need, and the transparency, the list that um, the news reports that you were going to come up with. I think those are really going to help us to know who who um, received it you know, uh, that were on the 1995 list. That's very, very important. Who jumped? And I think, uh, you know, we will have to 
deal with those. I mean, I know you have a plan, but to, so I just want to say it's not it's not easy, but I think it's it's appropriate that um, those all be dealt with as as fairly as possible. Um, but I think the most fair thing is that um, we we stop any kind of impropriety if there's any that's going on and that we we stop this practice of, of switching or jumping because I don't I don't see that that's allowed by the rules and if um, so but I, I do think that we should give some confidence to those who have received their leases rightfully in especially those who applied in 1995 I mean especially those because we're still in the 1995 list and and we should we should do what we can to make sure that they have some confidence in, in what has been provided. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have Senate. a question. Um, where is the CLTC uh, office? The last I know, it was in Anigua or? It's at the ITC still, building in oh, Tamuni. Oh, they move. Okay, uh -uh. see. <laughs> I wasn't informed, so. Okay. But I, All right. I'll check. Thank you. Okay. Senator Ogan? This must Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I, I want to thank you for having this oversight hearing. Uh, I think that this is where you and I have our differences. There's no differences, Senator. No, 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 we do have our differences because in terms of serving as the chairman of this particular committee, Mr. Chairman, we have applicants that have waited for 23 years and they have five minutes to be able to provide their testimony. So I think that that's where the difference comes in. Also, in addition to that, you know, I propose a nuclear option. And we've heard from a number of the presenters here that the issue has been with personnel. So if we have personnel within the Tomorrowland Trust carrying out some of these activities that are either questionable or perceived illegal, then it's like the hen watching the I mean, the fox watching the hen house. And that's why, Mr. Chair, it's essential that we restore integrity into this entire process. The chairperson has pulled the, le the, the lever, so to speak, and has implemented some initiatives. But I don't think that that's sufficient to be able to get this entire program up to where it should be. Because when we have 2,461 residential leases that have already been released and we're listening to complaints and concerns from individuals who filed in the in 1995 and incidentally mr chairman the filing initiation date was december 2nd 1995 that was when the first applicant application was received so between december 2nd 1995 to december 31st 1995 and we still have applicants who have yet to be entertained, then their system is broken and it needs to be fixed. And if it requires a severe measure, such as a temporary receiver as proposed in one of my proposed legislation, and it requires that in fact that individual be given full discretionary authority to correct this situation, then that really should be the option taken. And yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to stick with your five-minute requirement or restriction, but it comes back again to looking at the system, and albeit some decisions have been made to try to address it, it's not enough. Our people, we have 11,000-plus applications for residential land leases. 2,461 have been given out, and we're still discussing applicants from 1995. If that doesn't tell us that the system is broken and decisions have been made that are inconsistent with the laws that says, literally, the law says, first come, first served. That means the individual that had 300 sequence should be entertained before the person that received or submitted their application with a thousand sequence, sequential number. That's what the law reads, and I have no idea who interpreted a law incorrectly when we have, I'm, I'm reviewing right now, Mr. Chairman, a list of applications, one of which submitted an application in 2011 and was able to receive land. 
So it's like having the fox guard the hen house, and we need to fix this entire process because we're dealing with real land disposition that be rightfully belongs to the Chamorro people in this case. Mr. Chairman, I certainly hope that we can resolve all of this situation because at the end, it's about our Chamorros as defined in the Chamorro, the Chamorro Land Trust Act who will be getting these properties. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator. Senator Torres. Buenas noches, Torres Hamzu. Malago na besang ani na Hamzu na senagudesi. Hamzu ni finatun mizu pago. Za hami senadora sa ni senador siha mane ekungo kafa ilalik mo pago. Za ukomprendi i problema gwini za ukomprendi na mansat saga Hamzu za man malago hit na para ta ekungo kamzu ta tapan komprendi za ta. Not fat maulik and gin sina that fat maulik. Because I know how we saw Sklan, to do small asi, to who ekungo kamzu. Because I do. To do small asi, Senator. Senator St. Nicholas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for having tonight's hearing. Listening to these kind of things happening on our island is just always so heartbreaking, especially when it just becomes evident that it's our own people doing it to our own people. How are we ever going to build the faith and trust in our own community to be able to do any kind of anything else? You know, we have all these grand ideas, and yet when we have these opportunities in front of us to help our people, we turn it into something like this. It's just so sad. Uh, I, I thank you also, Mr. Chairman, for having the hearing during these times. I mean, political times, they're the hardest times to you know, bring things out. But when we're brave enough to just, to, to just create the forum to do so, that's, that's a start. Uh, I'd like to thank the members of the media who have brought attention to this issue. I'd like to thank uh, also Senator Uggen and my other colleagues who have uh, rallied also to this issue. I'd like to thank the members of the commission. Um, I know some of you. And, uh, you know, instead of just being quiet about it, uh, everybody's trying to figure out how to fix it. And that's, that's the most important thing. That's the first step in restoring confidence. And I think in the end, I mean, yes, the land is important, but I think what's most important is the confidence. We have to have confidence in each other. We need to know we're not going to be ripping each other off. First chance we get just because nobody's looking. This is since 1995 and we're still having this conversation. And it's actually gotten worse. The tenor of the conversation has gotten worse over the years. And so this is perhaps an opportunity, uh, Mr. Chairman, with you calling this hearing, uh, you've set us in motion to begin a very public and very necessary dialogue to restore this confidence, to fix this issue, and to turn this very sad story perhaps into an example of what we can do as a people when we face what's wrong and do what's right. So Mr. Chairman, I'll stand with you and my colleagues to take this information that we're provided to support our commissioners, to entertain any other ideas that might help advance this, this cause, but that ultimately must be the goal. Because if we can't get it right for ourselves, no one's going to do it for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator S. Nicholas. Uh, Senator Spaldon. Senator Stevis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sizu uh, Masi, thank you for everybody uh, coming, coming here tonight. Um, the testimony was definitely very empowering and really highlighted a lot of the issues that I think for a long time we all known or heard in the in the back kitchens um, as having go, going on. And I think it's it's really evident to how far we've come as a government to hear this in this official capacity. I mean, we've had numerous administrations and numerous oversight chairs, and I'd really like to highlight and thank and extend, extend a special 
thanks to uh, the Tomorrowland Trust Commission and uh, their, their board members. And what we see right now is, is the government working for the people. And we see action being taken. Um, unfortunately, it's come late for many. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really surprised, and I really have to admit how surprised I am to see how many people actually know in this room. And, you know, conversations we've had and, you know, even some family members here not even knowing the, the struggles that they've been going through. Um, I myself have never taken the opportunity to apply for the Tomorrow Land Trust. Um, just because growing up I knew how difficult it was and how much in need the people were uh, for this, our people. Um, and, you know, I just want to leave tonight with a commitment, and I'm sure, sure the consensus here is that, you know, the, everybody up here is committed to working to this issue, and I have full faith and confidence uh, that the commission will do what's necessary. Um, it, it, again, and this will probably be saved for Thursday, I, I am, you know, you know, I heard too um, in just understanding that how how, and trying to say this the, the best way possible, how, how inept and how certain a lacking of, of, of processes in our government can have such far-reaching effects to people's lives and how, you know, we've talked about the history that we have on this island and how it affects generations of our people and as what my previous colleague alluded, colleague alluded, alluded to, we're doing it to ourselves. Um, so again, thank you. Thank you for, for coming tonight. Thank you for presenting your stories. Thank you for putting it into the record. And I understand and I'm, I know, I'm sure that this is only just scratching the surface of the other issues that people are going through that they have yet to bring forward. And I look, f I look forward to assisting and working the issue. And I look forward to working with the Chamorro Land Trust Commission and finding resolution for the long term. Sisus Masi. Uh, thank you very much, Senator. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, recess this uh, oversight hearing until Thursday, May 24th at 5 p.m., at which time we will then uh, take up the issue of program compliance uh, and having as respondents the um, CLTC uh, commissioners and the administrative um, director. So with that, uh, this hearing is recessed.